Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is module number 5 of our series Design Effective Reports in Power BI. In today's module, we are going to learn about Enhanced Power BI Report Design for the User Experience. In this module, you would learn a lot of things such as design reports to show details, design report to highlight values, design report that behave like apps, work with bookmarks, design reports for navigation, work with visual headers, design reports with built-in assistance, and also use specialized visuals. This is more like theoretical part because if I'm gonna make a demo for this, it's gonna take a lot of time. However, previously I have already created videos on individual topics, but if you would like me to create video on any specific topic, please put down your comment in the comment section and definitely I'm gonna create a video on that. With that said, let's first see the answers of the previous module. So these are the answers of the last module. You can pause your screen and have a look. Now the very first comes design report showing details. Well, as I mentioned previously, we have to basically work on the three parts. The number one would be high level metrics. That is your key performance indicators. Then you should have supporting visuals so that anybody can analyze the data over there. And lastly, details that means you can provide drill through drill down or even embedded page reports for the details purpose you can show details by using four different techniques that is you can use the drillable visuals you can add tooltips that can be dynamic or fixed tooltip you can also add drill through and lastly you can embed paginated reports the very first is use drillable visuals that means you are going to provide a functionality that is known as drill through or drill down to the end users. However, you should ensure that the visual size is sufficient for consumers to view drill down details or you can teach your report consumers how to use focus mode to enlarge the visual. Also, you can add buttons to provide a quick way for report consumers to drill to specific levels. Second comes the add tooltips. As I mentioned you, there is default tooltips in the Power BI whenever you are creating any visual or you can also create your custom tooltips that can be dynamic. For custom tooltips, you can create a separate page and that page or the canvas size you have to keep it as a tooltip. Then you would go to the format pane section over there under the general you would find tooltips. There you can select your page and that's how you can use that one. Next comes the drill through. For example, consider a case when you have your visualization bar graph and there you would like to provide more details to the end consumer. So how you can do that? First, you have to create a separate page with all the details. Then on that page, click all those fields from the field pane and then over there, you can add them as drill through. So you have to use the same fields, one or many, into your visualization. For example, over here you can see this category breakdown and here all the categories are there. So in your details page, you should have this field. And then whenever you are going to click on this, you would find this drill through option. And next to that, you would find your page. So whichever page is using that field option as a drill through, you can navigate over there. However, you should note that report consumers might not be aware that drill through is supported by a visual. To promote visibility, you can add a button that performs drill through. Next comes the embedded paginated reports, but for that you should have embedded paginated reports license where you will find the different SQs. In my videos of Power BI Premium Capacity and the Power BI Admin, I have already explained you all these capacity settings. If you haven't watched that video, please go and watch that. However, embedded paginated reports are generally we use for our websites where we have to embed our Power BI reports so that user can go directly without any licensing requirement. They can go and they can check all those reports. Next comes the design reports highlighting values continuum. Over here, we have conditional formatting, overlaid analytics, anomaly detection and specialized visuals. All of these topics we have already covered in our previous videos. I'll provide you a link in the description sections. So please don't forget to check that. Here we are just going to discuss them briefly. The very first comes the conditional formatting. For example, you are working on a visual chart where you have to go for the background color font, font color, data bars or icons. Everything you can do, you will go into the formatting options. First, you have to select your visualization, for example, a matrix or a chart or a table. 
Then you have to go to the formatting options. Over there you will find conditional formatting. Or in case of table, it would be cell element in the latest version of Power BI formatting option. So there you can switch on or off whether you want to change the font conditionally, you want to make the background color based on your condition or you would like to get the data bars or the icons etc. Second comes the overlaid analytics that means if you have to perform advanced analytics then on the formatting pane you would find the third tab that means first is your field one then format and then the third is the overlay. Over here you can perform a lot of options for example you can add your constant line you can even add minimum line, maximum average, median, percentile or even if you would like to predict the forecast that one also you can do over here. Next comes the anomaly detection. So when this feature has been launched with Power BI, that time we created a very nice video over this one and now it's generally available as far as we know. So you should use this one. Whenever you think there can be some anomaly present in your data, so based on the number of points that you selected or the percentage you would like to see, you will get those anomalies into your data. You will find the link of this anomaly detection video in the description section. So please don't forget to check that. Next comes design report that behave like apps. That means whenever you are going to use your Power BI reports, they should behave like you are using an app onto your mobile phone. And how we can transition that kind of experience into Power BI? Well, for that you can create certain buttons, you can create button for move forward, backward, left, right, information icon or help icon. Or generally what I do, I generally create buttons for the different pages and nowadays in Power BI you can even create buttons for all the pages by the page navigator option which is available under buttons. So those kinds of buttons you should use and then there's a lot of conditional formatting under them. What do you want over there for a button to behave when you hover, you click or by default. So you can customize, even you can add images to your buttons. That's how we can design a very effective Power BI reports now the very important part over here is working with bookmarks. We know that whenever we are working with Power BI reports, there are many scenarios when we have to create multiple visualization within the same visualization. For example, you have to show a data on a visualization yearly or monthly. That means you want to switch them. Or in another sense, you have certain buttons and according to the buttons that you click, you would like to display the corresponding data. For that we can use the bookmarks. I have already explained this feature as well in my previous videos but if you would like to know more about it please do let me know. So over here you will find a very nice example of bookmarks as I mentioned whenever we have to change our visualization or we want to change to chart to map and all so we can use this. Now also, as I mentioned you a couple of minutes back, we have page navigator. So either you can create your own customized page navigator or you can also use the built-in page navigator button from the Microsoft Power BI. So it totally depends on you how you would like to create it, whether you want to use the button or you want to add some icon and then on the icons you want to add some certain actions. But behind the scene, basically you have to connect your buttons or icons with the bookmarks that you have created or the page that means you also get the page navigation under the action not just of bookmarks so you can connect with that and accordingly whenever you are going to click on those buttons it's gonna behave work with visual headers as you can see in the highlighted area there's arrow up down two arrows then there is a trident pin there is a filter icon there is a focus button Lastly, there is a eclipses as well where you will get the certain options. So you should know that what are the meaning of these. Well, the first four till the trident they are using to drill down options. The next to that pin is whenever you are creating a dashboard and you want to pin this particular visual into your dashboard then you are going to use that one. Filter button is going to tell you what all other filters have been applied to this visualization. And then comes to the eclipses where you will find the certain options and I'm sure you are very well aware about these options. If not, please do let me know in the comment section. Design report with built-in assistance. That simply means whenever somebody is coming to your report or dashboard and they have some query, they want to know about something. For example, at the bottom, you can see this inventory turnover ratio. 
So if somebody would like to know what is it, how to define it, then you can even provide a link or you can provide a tool tip over there. Over here this question mark button is basically for the help and here once you would hover it, you would get to know what is it. Otherwise you can even provide a link for any other page or website where whenever our end user is going to click, they can navigate to that particular page. Now the question comes use specialized visuals. So in many of the cases we know what to do and some advanced level or AI based visuals are like key influencers, your decomposition tree and your Q&A. That means when you want to see how your data is behaving and you want to know more about it. For example, let's say decomposition tree. First you have your sales opportunity, then you have to divide it further like drilling it down by the different software computers etc. And then you want to drill it down further by your region. That's how you can decompose your sales and you will get to know everything about that. On the other hand, if you want to know what are the main factors that are influencing your sales, in that case you can use the key influencers. And in certain cases you just want to use the natural language processing. So in that case you can just type your question in your business language and you will get the answer of that one. So there we use the Q&A visualization. Now this is the time when you check your knowledge. So you can now pause your screen, have a look at these questions. Please help me to answer these questions and you can provide your answers in the comment section and in the next video I'm going to provide you the answers of these questions. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next video.